Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, I want to go over a interview that Hayden Christensen just participated in on one called Joe IE. And he goes over, he's asked basically, what was it like playing Vader, you know, at this point in time? And he talks about how Vader is a very conflicted character in this time. And this for me gives a lot of validity to something that I was saying and a lot of you guys were saying in the comments several months ago when we were anticipating, you know, what the show was going to be like with the characters. In regards to Vader mainly, right, if he is full Anakin in Revenge of the Sith, this is now half as much. And then in A New Hope, it's pretty much almost gone. It's never all, it's never all gone because, of course, he does return in Return of the Jedi, so there's a little bit of him left. But at this point, and Hayden even confirming that he is a conflicted character, really tells me that we are going to see probably the most human personable and relatable form of Vader that we have ever seen to date. I think the level of connectivity with Hayden Christensen, with Anakin Skywalker and Darth Vader in this show will be exemplified a hundredfold. And we'll be able to really understand that this is not just Darth Vader in the suit, entombed in this dark casket, but rather this is just a very sad and depressing person that's got a tragic life now due to his very poor decisions, his very selfish decisions for what he thought was love, but was really for himself. Now, I think the journey that Vader is about to take in this show will be extremely evolving for his character, and it will be a beautiful arc. And I think it'll lead us close to a new hope. Of course, it doesn't land us there. We're still about 10 years away, but it will lead us further from Revenge of the Sith and at least uh, give us some traces for where A New Hope takes us and starts. Now, the main thing that I want to keep in mind or have you keep in mind in the show is that Vader is a tragic character. He is not this all-powerful being. In, I mean, sure, he is to mere mortals like you or me, you know, to officers and rebels and soldiers, or maybe even other warriors, even the Inquisitors, for example. They're nothing compared to him. But on the inside, he is so much in pain and he is constantly brooding over finding Kenobi. And Hayden goes on to say that this is really his main focus to find Obi-Wan. And at this point, you know, we don't know if Obi-Wan knows if Anakin has survived, if Vader has survived or not. Now, in the Revenge of the Sith novel, and I don't know how much of this they're going to take in the show or if they're going to use any of it at all. But in the Revenge of the Sith, Sith novel, Obi-Wan sees Palpatine flying over and he gets the heck out of there because he knows and he actually contemplates this is written by Matthew Stover and it's signed off by George. If he were to go down on the lava, he may slip and fall into the lava himself down the riverbank from the high ground. He may slip and fall into the lava himself or he may be able to get Anakin to, to like to finish the job to kill him why he didn't, he may slip into lava, or if he doesn't and does the job, Palpatine would be right there and he would kill him. And he doesn't know if Yoda has survived or not. Clearly, if Palpatine's there, Yoda didn't do a very good job. So he's either dead or he's now in hiding. And he has to either just leave that place, save Padme, and go and try to find Yoda. So he did actually think about killing Anakin, but he, first of all, couldn't bring himself to do it. Second of all, the logistics of the time and everything of Palpatine heading overhead and also, I mean, just the topography, if that's the right, the geography, not the topography, it's on a map, the geography of the, the place, he would have slipped and fell into the lava or gotten stuck there and not been able to get out. Nope, I can't get up. So for me, I'm wondering if, what is his reaction going to be like if he, <laughs> when he finds out that Anakin is actually alive and he is now more machine than man? And I think it'll really connect that scene where Alec Guinness talks about it as well and says that he is more machine than man to Luke. Because to him, probably it's a major surprise that he doesn't expect. And I am very excited to see how he will find out in the show. Now, in Legends, in a book called The Rise of Darth Vader, Dark Lord, The Rise of Darth Vader, which is a really great book, it goes over Obi-Wan finding out that Anakin was alive and is Darth Vader by seeing a hologram of Darth Vader and having people talk about him in the bar talk about Vader in the cantina, in the bar. Obi-Wan goes crazy. He's like, oh my God, I can't believe this. He runs out and all of a sudden Qui-Gon starts speaking to him in the force. I'll make a little video on it. I have before, but I'll make like just a quick talking video to get you guys caught up and recapped. And essentially he's like, oh my God, Qui-Gon, like, like, should I have left him there? Like, should I have killed him? And how did this happen? I failed him. And Qui-Gon's like, just basically, he's like, shut up. Anakin made his choice and 
his life is in the hands of the Force now. It's in the will of the Force, which is such a Qui-Gon thing to say. So this show is really, and what Hayden just confirmed, is that Vader is extremely conflicted. Well, he's just a conflicted character in general, always. He doesn't really know where he belongs. He doesn't know, does he belong on the light side? Does he belong on the dark side? He's kind of just thrust into this life now because of the decisions he's made, and it didn't go how he expected it to go. He was just trying to save his wife, and no one was helping him, and eventually Palpatine came to him and said, you know what he said about Plagueis. And he told him if he does these certain horrific things, to the younglings, so the Jedi betrays his friends, then he'll unlock the abilities and the powers in order to be able to save his wife from death. And only then, when he does after all this stuff, which is when his eyes turn orange, then can he save her. So I think he's going to be really ruminating on a lot of that in this show and coming to terms with a lot of his demons and a lot of his choices, perhaps even going through flashbacks in his own mind. Who knows what? I think this show is going to show us a Vader that many of us have not seen before. Especially if you haven't seen the comics or read the books, you're going to be very surprised. That's my theory on what we're about to see. How actually defenseless and sad Vader really is, you know, and how kind of pathetic he is, as George always said. That he, like, needs robots for him to live. And that he's always in pain, physically and emotionally. He just needs a big hug. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think about Vader and his overall arc in the show. What is something that you really want to see? What's something that you really don't want to see? I feel like Deborah Chow really understands Star Wars and she's done a phenomenal job with The Mandalorian, so I don't really have anything to be worried about. I've stayed away from the leaks as much as I can and um, I want to go in this as fresh as I can. So. I'm excited to see it all and view it all with you. And until then, until the next episode, until Thursday night, which will be episodes tomorrow after this too. But till Thursday night when we have the watch party, um, stay away from leaks as much as you can. And uh, I can't wait, man. This is this is a very exciting time for us, and uh, excited to experience it with you. So um, until the next episode, remember the Force will be with you always.